Welcome back to the currency market then and, and it's yet another day when the rupee has slipped in trade today, hit a fresh 5 week lows and breached the 62 mark as well. And this has happened even as the dollar has been on the stronger side, there has been demand from exporters and banks and the weakness comes despite the sluggish US dollar. Let's get in, get in also on the show Abhishek Goenka who is founder and CEO India Forex Advisors and he joins us live as well. Abhishek, hi, welcome. What's your sense on the currency now because we've seen a very sharp decline coming in even as equity markets have been alright and we have seen FI inflow sustainable. That's exactly the point, you know, that equity markets are doing good despite that the rupee is not able to breach the level of 61. Now it was in the thin band of 61 to 62 for like 20, 25, 30 trading sessions and now I think the markets have broken that particular band. And after 62 breaking, I think it's again uh, entered into that bearish territory and uh, the trend which we as uh, India Forex, we have always maintained that the dollar trend is still strong and I still maintain that, that with the Fed uh, going to taper maybe in December or March and with the Indian situation in which the swap window might get closed in November and uh, inflation problems and etc, etc, I think the rupee is poised to get weakened again. So I think any dips importers should be looking at uh, building up some long positions and exporters can uh, have a joy ride going forward. So what do you think is really bothering the rupee then Abhishek? Is it really about the OMC special window withdrawal which the market really seems to be getting bothered about? Yeah, so that is something which got that euphoria in the market. So the FCNRB flows and the the window which was open for the oil companies got a, a short term euphoria in the markets and dollar was also getting weak internationally. But in the last uh, couple of days time we have seen that uh, the US uh, non-ISM numbers uh, has come out good and uh, there is uh, some expectations that non-farm payroll numbers could also come good. The euro has crashed from 37, 38 levels to 35 levels. The index has gone up. And uh, in the local markets, despite the stock markets going up, the rupee is still weakening. And that's that gives us an indication that the rupee is uh, still weak. So because of all this, and of course the elections looming there, no FDI uh, would be very keen in putting money in India. Only the short term FII flows will be more buoyant. And because of which I feel that the fundamentals have still not changed. And uh, the flows uh, on a longer term basis will not see India as a very, very great market to invest. If you look at the bond yields, those have been, uh, you know, acting quite erratic as well, Abhishek. How would you read into them? And also the fact that most of the Asian currencies have been sluggish as well. Do you think that's a bit of a cue that the Indian rupee also seems to be getting? Yeah, so in talk about the bond deals, I would rather look at the US bond deals, uh, which has gone up, I mean, from 2.5%. Again, it's going up towards 2.65%, the 10-year bond, which is an indication that the US dollar is again getting stronger. And uh, the Asian currencies, I think, uh, of course, this, the weakness is there and because of which we are also getting cues that the rupee could get further weak. But I think uh, Euro, rupee still remains the worst performer in, since January. And I think uh, in going forward, I am not seeing much of appreciation below 61 levels in the rupee. Vijay, what's your sense as you have been saying for the longest time that 161 to 62 of a range breaks and on the weaker side, of course, and that we've seen happening today, how much of further decline would you expect? Manisha, I would continue to stick my neck out and say 63 and a half to maybe even 64 is coming. And uh, uh, in spite of uh, 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 somewhat of a stable equity markets, no uh, fundamental change on uh, FII inflows. The markets, the currency markets are not buying into a, a, a strong uh, equity market story and they are basically uh, seeming to have a mind of its own. I, I also talked about uh, the chartical correction that uh, the dollar has uh, undergone after hitting a 69 plus levels. It's gone to 61 odd levels, so the retracement uh, seems to be almost over. Therefore, the scope for appreciation of the rupee tends to be limited and unless the USDINR hits 64 odd levels, the uh, furtherance of that technical pattern will not get completed. So I'm betting on the fact that 83 and a half, um, 63 and a half to 64 is in the offing. Abhishek, coming back to you and you mentioned about how Euro is broken down from the kind of highs that it was trying to make. But having said that, most of the reports do indicate that the European Union perhaps is coming out of that difficult situation. Even then, you have seen Euro decline. What's your sense on the currency now? Uh, so, of course, uh, we have seen news in which the Eurozone numbers have come in good, but again the inflation expectations in the Eurozone are also coming down because of which there have been talks that there might be an interest rate cut. In fact, some analysts are betting on the fact that the recent uh, meeting that they're going to have, they might have a, a rate cut there. In case something like that happens, then definitely the dollar index will get a boost and the Euro will go down. So though the Euro uh, on a shorter term looks 
in a range of around 33 to 38. Now, that's a wide range, but typically that's the range in which the market has been moving. But uh, above 37, 38, I think the euro starts getting exhausted. So, I guess uh, I'm not very, very bullish on the euro though, but I think it's going to be in this broad range. And if this interest rate cut kind of a thing comes in, then of course, uh, the dollar would be the clear winner. Vijay, how would you look at the dollar index? Because if I remember correctly, you'd said a point or level of eight, uh, perhaps 80.68 is what you'd mentioned. If a breach of that happens, you might see some more bullishness coming in for that. How is it looking on charts now? Nothing has changed from that view which I put forth yesterday, Manisha. If you see the 80.66 being overcome on the upside, I think that would lead to a bear squeeze on the dollar in the absolute near term. And then um, the bears would have to uh, cover the dollar uh, shorts and, and, and lead it up to 81.18 odd levels. And um, on the downside, I would continue to watch 80.24 levels as a support. Well, it's a, it is a different kind of a day because even as the dollar index is down by quarter percent, we have seen the rupee also decline further in the market there. Abhishek, just coming back to the Asian currencies then, and India continues to be the third worst Asian performer there. We are down more than 10% for 2013. A new Samvat has started. A new calendar year is just less than a couple of months away. What's your sense as we head into the new year in sense of the rupee in Asian markets? So I guess the broad range for the next three to six months should be in the range of 61 to 65 that should be the broad range with a weaker bias and if things don't turn out very good in the elections or the US dollar starts getting very strong because of the tapering news in case they start doing it in December then definitely the Asian currencies and including the rupee is going to get hit a, a lot of, hit a lot so that's a very very important factor that I'm looking at because based on which the markets will move and if if it's not, it's not happening in December, it goes to March, then I think this should be a broad range. But if it's happening in December, then probably we could see much worse levels for the rupee. Vijay, I remember there were big trades coming in for the Japanese yen for some time in the previous quarter, but we haven't seen it move much. It continues to be the worst performer in Asian markets. What's your sense coming in for that currency now? Manisha, where the price front is concerned, uh, there's uh, nothing much to talk about. But uh, where the time uh, correction is concerned, uh, I'm specifically mentioning the uh, Japanese uh, yen INR pair here. I think uh, uh, there is a possibility that in the next uh, uh, week or so, there is uh, 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 a very good probability that the yen would rise against the rupee. And uh, basically, it, it is also a case of the rupee weakening vis-a-vis -vis the four currency pairs that are listed on the currency derivative segment on the NSE. I think uh, uh, one would uh, uh, ideally want to buy the dips on the JPY INR and uh, especially so if the decline is exceeding 1% uh, uh, at any given point in time, I would be inclined to buy the Japanese yen uh, versus the rupee. The only hindering factor is that it is uh, the lowest uh, uh, traded uh, uh, pair on the Indian uh, exchanges and uh, not only the turnover but even the open interest tends to be thin so exposure levels would have to be calibrated. That's a point well taken there, but the rupee continues to be on the weaker side on the pages from our experts there. But with that, Abhishek and Vijay, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your sense on currencies. With that, it's wrap on hot commodities. Coming up is Rasha.